Welcome back to the show. I'm Karen Kingsbury, and as you know, I have told a million stories, but I've never told mine until now. So the Karen Kingsbury Show, season one, is just you getting to know me and me sharing everything from the depths of my heart with you. Last week, you know, we talked with Taylor and Tay Lautner about the importance of expressing emotion. And that is true, and it is important, but there's also a time to kind of set your emotions aside, check your fear at the gate, and just step into faith. And that's what we're talking about today and the moment when my husband came to me and said, if we have to sell everything to do it, we are going to follow God's will. And that's what we're talking about today. Now, today I have as my special guest, my incredible husband of 35 years, love of my life, my very own Prince Charming, mm -hmm. Donald Russell. And I'm so glad to be here. Yep. Thank love you. Love doing this. Welcome back to the show. Yes. Um, you have been incredible in believing in my dreams. My dad did that while I was growing up, and you have done that from the beginning. I, I really, I mean, I can't express enough how much it means to me when I have a speaking event and it's like eight hours away, and you know, Austin is, you know, our son Austin is the road manager and he'll take me. But you're like, I want to go. I want to be there. Like, you always say, do you really mean it? I love just watching you speak, and and I love that you get to read your read. Meet your readers, <laughs> you know, because you love Sound that. Sounds like too, a so Dr. Just, Seuss take on exactly. it. Exactly. You know? <laughs> so you get to, I, I just love that. I really yeah. do. I truly do. Well, I, I appreciate all that support. So it's not that surprising to me that you would be behind the idea of making a movie. Now, today is a big day. Yes, it is. What is it? Release day for... Someone like you there releases you in theaters. It opens today everywhere. Mm -hmm. And the buzz and the excitement is beyond what I could have ever asked or imagined. We certainly prayed through the entire... Ever since I have to we, give a... You have to give Because <laughs> it's so exciting. So exciting. Ever since we yelled pretty much, that's a wrap. Ever since Tyler yelled that, mm -hmm. it has been a journey of faith, a second journey of faith. Wow. Praying for the marketing that the word would get out. It's a busy and loud world. It's hard to get your message out there. But right from when we released the trailer and it went viral on social media, I thought, Lord, you are up to something really big here. And today, uh, it's all coming to fruition. Yes. It's so exciting. We're what a so real thrilled. People are in for a treat. Go see that movie. It is so good. It's so good. It I is. don't even get tired of seeing it, even no. now. And like, I feel like when I watch people, do you remember that we had a screening at the house once early on in the process, and we had a real mixed group. We had some college kids. Uh, we had a um, detective, a uh, guy from the SWAT team, and his wife. We had uh, a mix of people who were from our Bible study. You know, it was just a mix. But people were, every one of them were just gripped. Yes. And at the end, they were like, what in the world? That is so good. And one of the guys... Uh, he's an under, I think he was an undercover um, detective with the in, in L.A. with the drug team. Very big guy, you know, has like this long beard. He looks undercover. And he said, I cried through that movie. He said, I love that. That's going to change lives. Mm -hmm. And then he offered to pray for it. Yes. Yeah. And today? Beautiful. All the prayers, all the work, everything comes to fruition today. So we're, we're super excited. But it didn't start here, obviously. It, I think it started with our move to Nashville. That's what it, it kind of feels like to me. Once we moved to Nashville in 2011, things with film and movies just really began ramping up. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to go back to that moment. We, we raised our kids 13 years in Washington State. We had just built our, our dream house, really, yes. on seven acres. You know, We had a place where the kids ran and played. And we had a first house on that property. Uh, lived in that for a while and then built the dream house behind it. Had Our the, forever house. The forever house. And forever had that house. first one house when we moved it. Had a house movers come and move it to a different piece of land. That was wild. Um, so here we are. We have this beautiful house. I have employees. I mean, we're living our life. You're a head coach at a beautiful Christian school, uh, basketball coach. And all of a sudden, we take a walk like we do all the time. We take a walk around the neighborhood. And you tell me the craziest thing. Talk about that. Well, because the... the day earlier I was on my walk and I just felt and it, it's weird because it wasn't a I couldn't hear it but I just felt like God was saying you're through you're done here and I was like done here what does that mean done here like you said well I was at Kingsway yeah uh, which I loved I uh, was teaching Spanish and coaching and and just enjoying Killing it. it, by the way. Enjoying you were doing so, so well. You were taking team, a brand new team to the playoffs. Like 
you, we had to open both sides of the bleachers. It was so much fun. So many fun. fans were coming out. The students were out. great, and the people I worked it was with amazing. was incredible. But I just and God just said you're done, and I thought, well, what what does that mean? And I didn't think I don't even think I told you. No, <laughs> I guarantee you, you didn't tell me <laughs> on that day. And then it happened again. Wow. Same thing. You're, you're done here. And then I, I would be at work, and I would walk down the hall, and it's almost like I just felt something inside of me saying, "Soak this all in. Take a picture. You mm. know, and breathe it. Remember the smell and the sound." And and I thought that is so weird. What what's going on here? Because so it was then, it was the end of the school year. Right. It was towards the end yeah. of the school year, and so that's I just. What do you mean? I'm done. I'm done. I just. And so then I finally shared it with you on that was, walk. On that walk, I said, "Honey, I think Jesus is." I think we're supposed to, either I'm supposed to quit my job, something's supposed to happen. For some reason, I feel like we're supposed to move. Yeah, that's, that's what you I said. dropped a bomb. Right. Honestly, I mean, you know, it had been just, what, a year and a half earlier, but you'd had that stroke and God had miraculously yes. healed you and you mm-hmm. were completely without any deficits. But in that moment, I'm like, I, I wondered if you're, <laughs> okay, are you okay? <laughs> because what? <laughs> you want to move? Like we just built this house. Too, right. was, was it? I guess we'd been in the house probably five years at that point. Mm-hmm. But I still felt like everything was new and you were at the peak of your career. Like I just felt, I had just signed a, a deal, of course, um, with Simon & Schuster. That was part of it as well. Or maybe it was just the way God worked well, it. Well, everything was perfect. Perfect timing. You know, like you, that's what you work for. The last thing the I last ever thing. in my life thought you would say that God, I think God wants us to move. Um, but as we began to unravel that and think about it. Well, things that happen along the way. Yeah. Just yeah. incredible. And we started saying, well, look, I think actually this is what God is saying to you. But I mean, my goodness, literally when I heard it, I thought you were like having, I thought we need, maybe I would say you should sit down or have some water. <laughs> it just seemed so crazy. Uh, that was already summer. So we'd already moved into our summertime in Washington state. And of course, summer's there a, a little later. We got to school later and they start later than they do here in Nashville. And so I was like, like what? And you kind of told me. And then I think later that day, I had a conversation with my agent and he said, you know, the imprint that you work with, with Simon & Schuster, at that time was Howard Books, and it was based in Nashville, Tennessee. Mm-hmm. He said, if you could be there with this big contract, you would sit in on the marketing meetings and you would be parts of the you know, PR discussions. It would really help on your doing well with this contract. And then not only that, but the tours that happen, like tours happen out of Nashville, not out of Washington State. Uh, so I went back to you and I said, wow, I think maybe you might be right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like that's uh, as crazy as it sounds. And um, I remember that at that time, Kelsey and Kyle were dating. They were just starting to date. You know, we've, we got, we've gotten to hear their, their beautiful love story a couple episodes ago. But they um, had just started dating and they were getting more serious. And Kelsey was thinking about moving to Nashville and maybe living with Britt Nicole, a friend mm-hmm. of hers who was a, an artist, a Christian artist. Uh, that wasn't a part of this. It was more just like, oh, wait, that'll work, too. If Kelsey is right. moving to Nashville and if they're so serious that they might be getting married, then maybe this is the right choice. But it wasn't really part of the initial discussion. No. Um, so we took a crazy trip. We took a 72-hour trip to Nashville, and we prayed. Do you remember what we were asking God? We asked God for a lot on that trip. We sure did. Well, first, our kids. Yeah. You know, they were high school age. So yeah. Them, so that they didn't want to move. They were like, no, are you kidding? We have no yeah. friends. And so we said, well, like we always say, God is in control. Yeah. And all you have to do is pray that if this is not your will, if dad and mom are just Crazy, <laughs> we've lost right it. Now, close all the doors, and we yeah. so we we and that the kids told would want them, to that they right. would that their hearts would change. Right? right. So we specifically said, "Well, we need yeah to find a house for us, house for my mom, house for your mom, and a school, obviously." Yeah. In other words, everything had to be perfect. Perfect. It had to line up, and you know. How, what, you think that's going to line up? I don't know. Right. That's, we had a certain budget that we had for our, the two houses we needed to find, and. To the, we got out here. We met Maria Holland, the realtor. Mm-hmm. She was so Southern. She talked so Southern that I, I had to say to myself, I, I just did not understand her. I can I can imitate her today. <laughs> but I did not. I just, I'd be on the phone with her. 
at the hotel, and I would say, okay, uh, yes, okay, hang up, and then you would say, what did she say? And I said, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she'll be here in five minutes. I don't know. Um, because she was just so sweetly Southern, and she would have uh-huh. such a sweet way of saying, we're going to go look at two houses. Uh, she took us to look at some houses. The first one, she said, this is way underpriced. I don't know why it's priced like this. If it's not gutted, then there's some miracle happening here because it shouldn't be that low. That ended up being my mom's house. Yes. The second house, I feel like uh, we both were like, this is, there was, okay, we went to, we were looking at a different house. Right. Yes. And then that house, they didn't, they weren't ready for us to come take a look. They literally said, no, we can't do a show Yeah, our flight was leaving in hours at that point. And uh, yeah, so the one next door was for sale. Mm -hmm. So we got to go inside and look at it. And when we did, across the street, there was this sweet little pond. And there was this little boy out there, and he was fishing in the pond. And on his shirt, it said the name of the school that we had toured earlier that day where we had such a good feeling and thought the kids would love it. And it was like, wait, you go to that school, and you're right here in the neighborhood? And he said, yes, (laughs) ma'am. I thought, okay, this is amazing. You know, the house we we ended up looking at, both the houses combined were to the penny what we had budgeted. Mm Mm-hmm. It was, and only God could have done that. Right. We go home, and miraculously, the kids are excited. Mm-hmm. So we end up moving to Nashville. Do you remember what people thought? Oh, yes. They thought we were running <laughs> from the law. <laughs> Wait a minute. Because we had, well, because they got out of school so late, and then out here in the South, they start school so early. Right. Plus, the boys were playing football. Right. So we had, what, well, how many 11 days, days or something, something to turn like things around too. once we got home to move. I mean, our friends were crazy. like, what? You're moving? And we had to pay movers to come and pack it all up. It was like a frenzy. And just like that, we blinked and we were living. We lived for several weeks in a hotel. Mm-hmm. Um, but then the house is closed and we all got moved in. My mom and my sister Trish, you know, who has been my one of my very best friends and working with us now for almost 20 years. But she needed to come. She lived and still lives with, with my mom. So uh, it all worked. It all fell into place in a way that was just crazy. But it wasn't until we got into Nashville that I felt things with movies really started to kick off. And the first thing we had was the movie The Bridge. Um, Hallmark did a Christmas movie on my first book with Simon & Schuster, and that was called The Bridge. But they decided to make it into two parts, which who does that for a Christmas movie, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, sure, if you're going to show it like Friday and Saturday. Or Saturday at 7 and Saturday at 9. You know, you could do two parts. You really never see that on on a Hallmark Christmas movie. But in this case, they did that. And we were all excited. We had balloons. And we were there for the, you know, the first moment to watch that show on TV. We were so excited. And it wasn't 50 at the end, you know, to be continued next Next year. year. (laughs) What? (laughs) And I had a nervous feeling about that. But I tell you, 10 minutes after that movie ended... Our email box was flooded with practically like threats. People were so mad. Do you remember they stormed the gates virtually of of Hallmark? They did. And they were going to shut down Hallmark's. I mean, social media was going crazy. No, it was people were what? What is happening? What is going on? And uh, I became good friends with the CEO of Hallmark at the time, and and we just had to have conversations about how can we fix this. They ended up releasing episode two, you know, part two. Um, at Easter. Mm-hmm. They sped it up. They did. Because people were so angry. I mean, I'm talking hundreds of thousands of people who wrote in and were so angry and said things sometimes not very nice. <laughs> I was like, this is a I'm like hated person here. What's happening? <laughs> well, uh, you had no control. Over no it. control over it. And that was the thing that I, we kept hearing over and over again is that is somebody else is doing the movie. They're paying for it. They have control. They have control. They can do what they want. And my people don't know that. And some people accuse me of trying to sell books by having a cliffhanger. Oh, I remember that. Oh. You're just trying to sell books. Yeah. So you did this on purpose. My goodness. Of course I'm not. If I wanted to sell the book, I'd give you the whole story, you know, <laughs> at least that. So anyway, that was that was crazy. And then we thought, well, maybe if we write the scripts, me and Tyler were writing scripts by then, our oldest son, Tyler. And he'll be on the show in a few weeks, which is going to be fun to hear from him and his perspective on mm-hmm. directing someone like you, the movie. But he and I began to write. So we wrote Maggie's Christmas Miracle, which was another Hallmark movie. Um, and that was a fun, now that was a, a happy, no stress release party when we were all, we gathered the whole house yes. full of friends. And um, Tyler's friends were so proud of him too. They came and he was just 
finishing college and already mm-hmm. writing for Hallmark. So that was exciting. But again, it kept on being, how do we do this? How can it be something that I, where, where it's like actually my movie? And I think it was probably around that time that you began to say that. What were you thinking? Well, I just kept thinking because we were so grateful that they were being filmed. So but when you compared it to your book and when you, I know your heart and I know, well, this scene wasn't this way, honey. And we talk about it. And, and where just, was the faith, actually? <laughs> right. And I just started thinking, it goes back to what we've always said. If, if you pay for it, you get to do what you want. Mm-hmm. And so I, I, I think it was right then I said, one day we have to make our own movie. I mean, we, you just got to do it, Karen. We got to make our own movie. Just trying to help plant put a the bug in the air, right? And, you know, the truth <laughs> was I was afraid. I really was. Um, I, I knew that there was, I did, first of all, a lot of unknowns. Like when I write a book, I cast the thing, you know, I, I find the sets, I plan the weather. Like it's, it's all imaginary. Sure. And I don't have to ask anybody's permission, but how in the world would you, it was overwhelming. It was so completely beyond my understanding. How do you make a movie? And see, to me, it was so simple in the sense of God gave you a gift. You glorify the Lord. You know, we're not perfect at all, but we try to glorify the Lord in all we do. And I just thought, it's his movie. He will show us what to do. Kind of that, you know, you step out of the boat, kind of the Peter thing. Like, because you're right, we're not movie makers, but I just try, okay, Lord, what do we do? And you know what that, that reminds me of when we first got married and we lived in a bunker and we had Kelsey and, you know, I was pregnant with Kelsey and you said, well, obviously you just need to pray for a way to work at home, write your books at home, write things at home. And I thought your, it's, your attitude was so simple, but it was so beautiful because it was absolutely trusting God to the point where you made it sound easy. And then the reason, reasoning in my own mind would, would sort of combat you and be like, it's not easy. It's not easy. It's hard. And you'd be like, well, you just, God will meet you. <laughs> so simple. And the truth is you're, you're always right on that with our marriage. It's always been the, the journey of 35 years together that when you humbly, you know, and joyfully and faithfully say, God's going to do this. God's got this. It's always been the case. So uh, we had uh, the next level was we Tyler and I wrote a television series for Pure Flix, mm-hmm. A Thousand Tomorrows, and that was also fun. But now it wasn't so much that you know they did a good job with it. They did, but again, you're it's like it's like making a movie with your hands tied behind your back because Ty couldn't direct, and you know we weren't able to do any make any impact to any aspect of the of the show. Of course, we had talented actors, and it really was a beautiful it was. production. But I think it just um, whetted our appetites that yes. oh, we're so close now. We're so close to making our own, um, you know, piece of art here that why don't we just do it? So you and I were discussing it. And to me, I look back and I think of it, you know, maybe because I'm married to a coach. Um, but I remember as a sports writer that when a professional baseball player, when the pitcher releases the ball and it's coming 97 miles an hour across home plate, the batter has a half a second to make that decision about whether to swing. Right. We talked about that, and you looked at me and said, I think we got to swing. We got to swing. I think it's time. So we took all of our courage, and we took it all to the Lord and prayed. And I remember saying, you know, the only way we're going to have – a lot of people were willing to help financially. They were, yeah, Karen, if you're going to open – Karen Kingsbury Productions, then sure, we'll, we'll be a person who can be an investor in that. Sure. But that comes with strings, and it came with um, the inability to just make the movie that we wanted to make that was in my heart. Mm-hmm. And you put your hands on my shoulders. Do you remember what you said? Yes, I said, honey, even if we have to sell everything, we'll go back and live in a garage. Right. <laughs> Literally, you... We have to make this movie. You have to get your story that the Lord has given you and let his movie shine on. Yes. And, you know, it's funny because when I wrote Someone Like You, when I got to the last sentence, and you know this about me, that I'll be, you know, laughing or crying. And, I mean, I'm so into my stories, like Ervil, right? I mean, I'm, I'm writing about Ervil, this <laughs> old woman who was in my book called Remember, part of the Baxter series. And Ervil had Alzheimer's. And she was, it was coming her time to pass. And so I'm writing more and more and more slowly because she was like the grandmother I never had. And I loved Herbal. I totally, you know, I, I hung on her every word. She was genteel and sweet. And, 
you know, she uh, would wake up every every morning at Sunset Hills Adult Care Home, and she would get her peppermint tea, and in her pressed sweet dress, she would go and sit in the front room and wait for Hank to come home from fishing. But Hank wasn't fishing. He had been in heaven for seven years because she had Alzheimer's. She didn't know. And so this character was so near and dear to me as, you know, this is the way that, this is what you've had to come to live with. I mean, you, you know I'm crazy, and that's okay. <laughs> uh, I'm writing, and I'm, and I'm writing slower and slower, and finally Ervil takes her last breath. So I take the laptop, set it down by my chair, and I just have to have a good cry over losing Ervil. So I'm crying, and I'm just wiping tears and thanking God for Ervil, and I know she's happy in a better place, even though it's all completely fictitious. And... Then you walk in the room, like, looking for a sweatshirt, and you stop. Honey, what's wrong? What happened? What's wrong? And I said, it's Herbal. She died. My, my dear Herbal died. <laughs> Do you remember what you said? Yeah. Well, like, Herbal? Well, I didn't want to be like... Do we know her from... Yeah, exactly. I was like... Where do we, Irva, or do we know her from school or from church? <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm like, no, no, honey, she's one of my characters. And I mean, you rolled your eyes all the way to the ceiling. You were like, well, I don't feel sorry for you. I mean, you killed her. Remember that? <laughs> yes. You were just so funny. You were just laughing I was at just me. Delete, right? Yeah, backspace. Backspace, delete. delete. Bring her back. Just bring her back. And thanks to you, I did bring her back, by the way. You know, the book mm-hmm. I just had that, that just came out just once. Beautiful. Ervil's love story back in World War II. Yes, So I did bring her back, so that was good advice. It's been a hard year. I fell in love with London Quinn in high school, even though she told me not to. She was in vitro, and there was another embryo. She might have a twin. Do I look like London? I can't change the past. Every time that I'm with you, I was looking at London all over again. She always wanted me to find someone like you. Karen Kingsbury's Someone Like You. Now playing in theaters. For tickets, visit someonelikeyou.movie. But I love my characters and I love the stories. I never feel like I'm the one making it up. I always feel like I'm the first reader. And that God has given me a movie in my heart. And that I get to just download it onto the page. So it's not that unusual for me to finish a chapter and be like, yes, yes, that's so good. But I'm saying it as a reader, not as a writer. Like mm-hmm. someone else might be like, well, that's really arrogant. arrogant that's, right. What is that? But you know, you've seen me laughing and crying mm-hmm. while I'm writing. And uh, you've had to tell the kids, mom's okay. She's just <laughs> writing. It's all right. But it's from, it's so God. It's so much just his story that I literally feel like the first reader. I'm just reading it. And that's why when I say what I say, I say it out of the, the way I would say it if I read a different book that I didn't write. When I wrote Someone Like You, I had that over and over, that feeling of, wow, this is so good. Like an embryo, you know, an embryo adoption and two twin sisters who never met each other and living in different families and the one not knowing she was adopted as an embryo and a love story coming out of that. Like it was so in my mind, I was, I loved it. I I hung on every word while I was writing it, like as if I were reading it. Mm -hmm. And when I finished it, the last sentence, I was like, oh, that is so good. I was crying. I thought it was so good. And I could, I could hear the Lord say, this is going to be your first movie. This is the one. <laughs> and that was in 2020 that that book came out. And, um, you know, that book was special for a lot of reasons. When it came out in 2020, we have a, a special bookstore in Franklin, not too far from where we live. And it was actually my inspiration for writing The Bridge about a bookstore that nearly closes down. That was what the Hallmark movie was and Mm -hmm. my book, The Bridge. But um, in real life, when the pandemic hit, that's when Landmark Booksellers, the little bookstore in downtown Franklin, was going to close. They were on the brink of, of having to close because they rely completely on foot traffic. So I called them and I said, hey, you know, um, I just wanted to check on you. How, how are things going? Because the, with the pandemic, everything's closed down. You have no foot traffic. And Joel, the owner, his voice cracked. And he said, Karen, I mean, we're going to lose everything. Like, I, I don't think it's going gonna, it's gonna to work. And I said, Joel, I have, a, I have a book coming out, you know, here. And it was coming out in like April, like, you know, a month into the lockdowns. Terrible time to release a book. And I said, do you think you could create an online presence on your for your store? Do you think you could make an online bookstore? 
he said, I, I can probably bring in a friend to help me. Mm -hmm. So he did and uh, hired a wonderful guy named Eric, actually, who built out a beautiful website. And I rallied my readers. God used those readers to save that bookstore. Yes. I said, it was beautiful. It was so fun. The title, right? Mm -hmm. someone, someone like, like you. you. So we asked them, we said to the readers, okay, someone like you can save Landmark booksellers. What do you think about Landmark when you go in it? I just love it. I love, because I love books. Mm -hmm. And it's just a, you know, it's like a friendly, what we would call what, an old time store, just yeah, it used books to be of every kind. A Civil War hospital yes. for a while. Just like Beckham, it's very old. Friendly, the, the people that work there are so yeah. friendly and they so helpful. And you can, you can find old books and mm -hmm. new books. You and I have spent many wonderful oh, hours get lost in there, yes. yeah, in that <laughs> store. So I told the readers, someone like you can save Landmark booksellers. And they purchased that book, someone like you, from Landmark at a higher cost, because that's small bookstores don't have Amazon prices. And they would tuck, you know, they would tuck a, a sweet landmark bookseller bookmark in the pages, but it's gonna cost you more. Five thousand in two days mm -hmm. made orders for someone like you. And uh, now we had a new problem. <laughs> Nowhere to fulfill those books because they just have one small back room. So then what happened? Then we opened up our house. Our house became a book packing, sending, shipping, slash everything. <laughs> it became everything. <laughs> Boxes all over. But it saved the bookstore. Yes. And isn't well that worth just it. been, and that's been our, our, I look back over the years at the times that we've used our house for something. I mean, we've had people live with us, but we've also used the house. Um, I think back to the a time when a middle school leader at our church called and she said, uh, Karen, you know, you've often offered to use your home. We had a pool, you know, a big backyard, lots of space. Uh, would you mind if we used your house for the middle school girls Hawaiian luau? And absolutely, yes. I mean, you know, our friends Bob and Tim, Tim Debo's parents, Bob and Pam, have often, you know, said, and we've had this conversation with them, that have your yes on the table for God. And we had our yes on the table. So I said, sure, yeah, absolutely, what date? And so she gave me the date. I said, sure, but, you know, I didn't write it down. And I forgot to tell you. <laughs> so I was away on a trip. I knew I was coming home that day, so I knew I should be home for the luau. But my flight got delayed. Got delayed. So go ahead and tell what happened from your end. Well, so what happened? <laughs> <laughs> and you do this a lot. I do, actually. So they were Kelsey and Tyler went with you. Yeah. So it was me and all the younger boys. And we went to church that night, and we came back, and we were going to have men's town. We were going to watch, like, Rocky or something yeah. and eat popcorn. And, <laughs> you know, just it was just men's town. And so we're sitting there enjoying them. We just started it. And the door knocks. And I opened the door, and it's a lady from church who also happened to be part of the Bible study. Yeah. And she said, oh, I guess am I too early? And I thought, well, yeah, Bible study's Tuesday. This is <laughs> <laughs> Friday night. Saturday night. <laughs> Whatever, yeah. <laughs> so it was so funny. And the boys were saying, well, who's that? Oh, just, you know, somebody got messed up on directions or times or something. And then I know I sit down, and right away, two seconds later, these headlights come up our driveway. We had a long driveway at that house. Right, and it fills the, the living room. And I look out, and there's a bus coming school down. School bus? Or a school bus coming down our driveway with full of middle school girls, middle, you know, <laughs> junior high girls. Yeah. And they, they they stay on the bus, but the leaders that I recognize from church get off, and they're like, we're here. They're all excited, we're here. And I'm like, <laughs> what are you here for? <laughs> and then you could tell by the look on their face, they're like, uh-oh, wait, did Karen not tell you? And I said, T tell me what? She said that we can use your house. We're actually going to have a sleepover. Yeah. You were going to grill hamburgers and hot dogs, <laughs> and they were going to swim in the pool. And so I was like, okay, well, yeah, let's, we'll ha you know, give me a second. So I ran in there and I told the boys, well, we have to cancel this. We got to get the chips out and get everything. And we made it work out, but it was just one of those times where it was like. We had a deep freeze back then, you know, like in the back, not a deep freeze, but like a big, big freezer in our garage. And we kept packs of the 20 you know from costco the 20 frozen burgers we had because we always had young we life always events had young life events or yeah. just 100 know, kids feeding 100 kids a, you know a hamburger was like sure just teams. let us get it out absolutely teams whole teams so it's not like you had to go buy anything no we no actually everything had was it. there it was just so funny because <laughs> so many times you've done that oh my goodness i just 
I, it's just such an easy yes, and I just roll with it. I can like if somebody said you got to do a wedding reception for someone tomorrow afternoon, I'd be like, fine. I can. Yeah. It just doesn't stress me out, right? And it doesn't stress you out no. either. But I just probably should tell you. It's just so. That's funny. That's always helpful. Um, it was like that with the movie too. So, uh, and of course that day, I have to go back to this one part because I land at two or three in the morning, late flight, and you decided. You wouldn't tell me. Oh, I thought, well, I was surprised. You might as well be surprised. So I, I picked you up. Your plane was late. It I'm was late. I'm exhausted coming in from O'Hare Airport. And I didn't tell you. I just gave you a kiss. I had great to see you. Da, da, yeah. da. Driving home, you fell asleep, which was perfect. It worked out perfect. <laughs> so you fall asleep. So I pull up the driveway just to where my headlights are hitting the bus, and I stop. And I wake you like, Karen, why is there a bus in our driveway? And you were like... <laughs> I don't know. They're, and I said, middle school? And then you like panic, like you're that instant awake. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Wait, is today the luau? Oh, that was so funny. That was you're so kind hilarious. to roll with it, to roll with my uh, my craziness. I see that you have put up with my craziness a little while, and you probably will have to do it again and again. Well, you walked in the house, remember, and they were all They're spread everywhere, out with everywhere. sleeping Girls bags and on sleeping the floor. Bags everywhere, which, I mean, you know, would have been fine had I not been, had I not totally forgotten about it, and so we, we made it work. We just roll up our sleeves and started loving on people and right. just helping them serve the breakfast, you know, yep. do what we needed That's to do. Great. To whom much has been given, much will be expected. We always keep going back to Luke twelve forty eight, 48. Um, but, you know, so it was like that with the movie, uh, we hired Natalie Rafino Wilson to be our on the ground producer, our producer mm-hmm. who was going to help us because we you can't a producer is like the general contractor in a movie. She knew the the crew in town, she the was electricians great. and the grip and the people who would um, help with art department and with the sound department and cameras. I mean, it was she had so many people she knew in town and she was fantastic. Yes, she was such a joy to work with and. She also was like a boss, right? She needed. She was a boss in, in, in the way of like, wow, she's a boss. But also she was the boss. Mm-hmm. So even though we were clearly, you know, I mean, we used our savings to pay for this movie. So that was a, it meant we could make the decisions. But I don't know how to make a movie. Right. So we needed someone who did. And that was Natalie. And she was, it was her first time to do a theatrical feature movie as well. But she was just But isn't so that like good. the Lord, you pray for wisdom. Yeah. And that, I, I would encourage everyone, pray for wisdom. You know, pray for oh, a lot yes. of things. We pray for health. And, right. and those are all great. Mm-hmm. But pray for wisdom specifically. Yeah. Because we, we, like you said, it was her very first big movie. And it was, we were all in it together. Right. But the Lord said, okay, I'll grant you this stuff. Yeah. So she said to me, we need a production office. And I'm like, a production office? What is that? And she said, Karen, you're going to have like, 30 people for the first three or four weeks and then eventually 50 people coming and going from the production office. You'll do, you know, costume fittings there. You'll bring art pieces in. You'll have hair and makeup doing sample run throughs and you'll have all of wardrobe. Like it's going to be a lot. And I said, well, we have a big house. We can do it. She's like, you don't want to do this at your house. And I said, you know what I think we do? And you and I, you know, I think I, did you, did I tell you that? You didn't even tell me till it happened. (laughs) Until you said, like, here comes, a, here here's comes what we're the our department. See that truck backing up into our driveway? But you, of course, were amazingly on board with that. It was unconventional, but the goal was to, I think I remember the first day that all the people were you know, gathered and we had an actual official, like we're starting today, pre-production, before cameras rolled. And I said to everyone, look, we're inviting God into this process. Mm-hmm. We're asking God to go before us behind us to give us wisdom and favor he he will be with us on set every day yes. and so we're going to honor him by starting each day with a devotion and just a small it was a couple minutes and uh, we picked verses you and i would talk about the what to share but a lot of the people who were working on the film weren't necessarily believers Mm-mm. but they would recognize that they were valued they were uh, important to us they had worth, and they were an integral part of what we were doing. Mm-hmm. So we loved them, and we built them up, and we shared verses with them that would help them to understand the love of God and right. the call of God on their life and how when you do something like this for the Lord, it needed to be excellent. Um, from the beginning, we asked them, you know, well, we're not going to have any cussing. Like, on set, we're not doing that. We're not going to have any, 
any, um, you know, we're not going to have alcohol on set or part of the movie. We're not going to use God's name in vain. And thank you for understanding us that this is so important to us. And we know that you all are professionals and you'll be amazing. But that is the atmosphere on a lot of movie sets. And it just can't be the atmosphere here. Right. And credit to them. Like you said, a lot, a lot of them weren't believers, but they yeah. were professional enough and they respected so us. So talented. The, you know. So it was good. Yeah. So what what did you, I mean, what, what was your take when the atmosphere in our house became absolutely crazy? T- well, I try think, to describe that. I think, <laughs> you know, you go in things blindly, and yeah. I'm so glad that we did it, and your heart had the right thing. But I think, you know, knowing now yeah. that you, you don't realize every costume, every prop, everything, everything is stored at the production office. Right. So our house was, it'd be two in the morning. There were people at our house yeah. downstairs Opening the garage, and, trying to get moved right. things in. So yeah. it was, you know, thank our neighbors, right? Our neighbors our were neighbors. so kind. Oh, we have great neighbors. Yeah. We really do. And, and yeah, such a, but, great, uh, such a great crew who, were, they were responsible yes, with the house. And they with were. Things, yeah. and it, so it was, it was hectic. But it was it was good also. And then, you know, there's you always have anything you do in life. There's positives and negatives. And but Jesus showed up. Well, always. And there were people who would stop us and ask us to pray for them. Mm-hmm. Or I, one of the guys I said from the beginning, look, we know of some charities that help people. If any of you ever had any problem, if there's anything you need, let us know. And one of the guys um, on the first day of the shoot, his car broke down and he needed a new engine. He did not have the money for it. And so we were able to connect him with resources, and he got a new engine. Mm-hmm. He was like, what in the world? Like, no one's ever loved me this well on a set. Right. That's what we kept hearing. There were comments like that all the time, like, gosh, I've never. Yeah. Never been loved like this. Right. Appreciated like this, which mm-hmm. I think that was the thing. You know, we were totally new, completely imperfect. Natalie was right. We should have had a production office, and we would next time. It'd be it'd be better for them, for mm-hmm. the people who were trying to do their jobs and who were so talented at doing them. But it became something we'll never do again. But it was it was a once in a lifetime beautiful chance to establish Karen Kingsbury Productions, right. what it meant that God would be honored. Um, I think at first that was probably a jarring set of sort of rules for everyone. Sure. But, boy, they loved it. And we all through the shoot, once we started rolling cameras, we just kept hearing over and over. What were people saying? Positive, just positive, like that I've never worked on a That's set it. like this. I feel loved. I feel, uh, you know, from everybody, yeah. everyone I've talked to. And then we had Georgia Brown helping us with mm-hmm. Crafty. Sweet Georgia. So you were helping she with Crafty. Great. EJ was helping with Crafty. Trish became a line producer, my, my sister and my assistant. Everybody pitched in. Everyone took on a job in our family. And our goal was to show people love and to mm-hmm. show them Jesus every day. Because we had to say, you know, if we're going to use all of our savings to make a movie, what if the Lord returns on day 20 of the shoot? Was it worth it? Is that what he wanted us to spend it on? And you and I both agreed that it was, that as long as we loved people well and led them to the truth of Jesus over and over in a loving way that was inviting and warm, that they could feel the presence of the Holy Spirit in our home Mm -hmm. and on set, then it would have been worth it. Absolutely. Even if we, even if the movie, something happened and we couldn't make it at the end of the day, still they, it would have been worth it. Right. Um, And now, you know, I can look back at the the red carpet premiere where all of those same people who filled our home were filling the seats of the theater for the for the red carpet premiere of it of someone like you and how happy they are and how they still look back and say this was an exceptional experience that we've never had before and it's sort of like god prepared us by opening our doors to people like the hawaiian luau you know middle Mm -hmm. school girls to this very day to this moment and to this incredible exciting um release day for someone like you such an adventure, right? And God has those plans for all of us. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a movie. Right. There, you know, God wants you to do something. You have to be willing. Like you said, like we learned, put your yes on the table and yes. then ask him. Right. And then just work, you know, do God's work, do yeah. his will. Well, I don't know what his will is. That's why you got to get in the word. Right. And pray. And, and he makes things clear to you. Yeah, he always does. Well, it's exciting. Next week, uh, I get to talk to Sarah Fisher and Jake Allen, the stars, the couple who are the the main stars of Someone Like You. Um, If you don't already have your tickets, you can go to someonelikeyou.movie and get your tickets now because showtimes are filling up. They're selling out, and uh, the Lord is just so good. We're already hearing from people who got to see a sneak peek of the movie that, gosh, now they want 
to have healing in their relationships mm-hmm. and in their families. One of the lines that I love from the movie is, there's enough division. You know, the world is divided enough. You can't have that in your family right. as well. So, uh, so it's a beginning. We're off to the races today. The movie opens everywhere, and I feel the pleasure of God. How about you? Oh, yes, definitely, yeah. for sure. God is so good. Um, okay, you're right. What you said, Jeremiah 29, 11, that God has good plans for us. And uh, tell you, if that's you right now, considering something major in your life, a big decision, you feel the Lord saying, you know, adopt a child or take that mission trip or go introduce yourself to the neighbors or make a movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, you got about a half a second to make that decision to take the swing. Just swing the bat. God will meet you in that place. I've learned that from a very important guy in my life, my husband. Mm -hmm. Uh, Would you go ahead and close us today in prayer and celebration of this beautiful day? Yes. Lord, we thank you so much. Once again, just Mm -hmm. we are humbled that you love us so much. We just pray for someone like you. It's your movie. Uh, We just want you to be glorified. We want people to walk out of the theaters with uh, their hearts full and, and just wanting to know who you are. Lord, your will be done in that. Lord, we just pray that we will always listen to your voice. If it means moving our families, if it means changing jobs. But Lord, we have to be in your word to know what you want from us. Lord, use us in mighty ways. Keep us safe from the evil one. Help us, Lord, to always do your will. It's in your will, it's in your power, it's in your strength that we are alive. And we thank you. We love you, Lord. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen.